Who is the true Barry? The way that you you downplay a fighter, down talk a fighter, and just like little, little stunts like, for instance, trying to get in the ring at Christmas to, at the, after the Frampton fight. You didn't need to do all that. You didn't. There's ways and means about going fight. The little snipes on on social media, odd comments, cocaine, want to be a football hooligan and stuff like that. I'm going to turn a lot of numbers as well. <laughs> is, is the voices in the room? You hear them? Is the spirits in the room with us? I just, you know, you just know something's get, that's what's going <laughs> The fight coming nearer. Here's the belt. 15th is the date. How are you both feeling? Let's hear from the, uh, let's hear from the challenger first. How's it all going? It's going good, you know, uh, training going good. Flying, um, ready for June the 15th. Can't wait. You know, 16 years preparing for this one day. I can't wait, you know, to get in that ring and be, you know, a solid champion. Not, you know, a vacant title. A solid champion who's beat, you know, two, you know, former champions. When you look at that belt, Barry, what would it mean to you to actually have that over your shoulder, round your waist, once the fight's finished? This, is, this means everything to me. I've had a great camp. Um, I've enjoyed this one. I think the run-up to both Selby and Frampton had a lot of distractions outside. But this one, I've just been able to concentrate fully on the boxing and uh, I've enjoyed all of the camp throughout. The love for it has just been every session going in, eager, wanting to learn. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling very good. Do you feel the same intensity that you did before those two fights? Because both of them, Selby and Frampton, there weren't too many people who thought you were going to win that. Yeah, there were. And, and, but what we're going to do is take away that thing of Selby, Frampton as names, as profiles, and look at it, what would it stake? I mean, I'd worked all my career, you know, taking steps as they come. I'd set my goal on, on winning a world title. Lee Selby and me had uh, said a few words over the years. It was like a massive rivalry. And I felt like my whole career would hang in on that one. The Frampton one, obviously, to be a good champion, you've got to defend your title. I didn't want to be a flash in the pan. And every time I defend that, um, I move a step closer to other goals that I've set, unifying the division, creating history. I've got two little girls now and a, and a wife, and, you know, I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the breadwinner. So, you know, I come home and I look at them. Their motivation, it's at a stage now, 12 weeks, I'd looked at Barry as being Barry the opponent. Now, I don't Barry look at him, Sheffield. Barry from Sheffield, but now I don't look at him as like this, anything else. I just look at him as he's the next man stopping me. And uh, it's, no one's going to stop me. No one's going to stop me on June 15th. I'm fully focused on what I've got to do. I know what I've got to do. And June 15th, you know, I've got tunnel vision. There's, there's nothing that's going to stop me from winning that title. What makes you so confident? I don't do 12 week camps, you know, I don't, after my fights, I don't, you know, go here, there and everywhere, go on holiday with the family. I don't, you know, I box on Saturday, Sunday night and back in the gym. So, you know, I think that's what's going to separate, you know, between me and him when we get in that ring. You've said in the run up to this that you, you're married to boxing. Yeah, that's it. You know, I've got no, nothing else, no children, no family, nothing. All I've got is boxing and that's, you know, that's all I'm fully focused on. How much do you admire that level of dedication, if you like, single-mindedness? Everyone's different, aren't they, John? Everyone needs their own uh, motivation, their own why. You've got to have a why. You've got to why what gets you out of bed in the morning, what makes you go to the gym and train even harder than yesterday. My why is the people around me. It's my own goals. I think I've got to where I am now, not because I'm the most talented, because I work hard and I'm persistent. And Barry talks about himself, you know, living life and... Uh, and being on the, that, this mission for 16 years. You're looking at a fighter who's been doing it for 21 years. You know, I've, I've been in the gym like since, uh, since a young lad. I know it's now a year since Brendan died. Yeah. You were very close to him, weren't you? Yeah, I spent a lot of time with Brendan. You know, uh, I spent more time with Brendan than I did with my own parents. He basically, you know, built me for this, for this, for the 15th of June. That's what he's been building me for. He was a father figure? Yeah, he was, you know, he's more than a father figure. He's a trainer, father, father figure, a mentor, a lot of things. And your father figure <laughs> is your father, <laughs> he and is, he is yeah. your trainer. He is, Tell yeah. us a bit about that uh, dynamic and about how that works. Early in my pro career, people might have said, um, you know, you need to get rid of your dad if you want to progress forward. He's not the man to take you on to titles. 
Um, but I was wise enough and old enough to listen to people around me and see what other trainers were saying to their fighters. And what my dad was saying made a lot more sense than what other trainers were saying to their fighters. I've seen what he's done behind the scenes, um, how much he's willing to put in to make sure we are successful. Uh, what about uh, Dominic working yeah. with Brendan's son? How do, you, how do you get on with him now? How does that all work? Everything that a fighter needs, he does for me. And, um, you know, him and his family basically kind of like whatever I need at the time, you know, if it's dinner or lunch or whatever, they do for me. How good a coach is he? I believe he's the best coach in the world, isn't it? As good as that? Yeah. Why you know, do you say that? Just because if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have got where they've got, you know, just because how they are. He's good at everything, Dominic. He can do everything, you know. He's always got the game plan spot on. What do you think about Sean? Sean's a good, a he's a good trainer, well, he must be good if he's got Josh, you know, to world level. I just believe Dominic's got a bit more experience than his dad. You know, they've been at this level before, you know, they've had other champions and that's what it's going to come down to. Let's talk about the fight and about the night. You're going to be going up there into a fairly feverish atmosphere. You are going to be absolutely on the receiving end there. Is that going to be a factor? To be a champion, this is what you've got to do. I, I think this is the best way to win a world title, is take, to take it off a solid champion. And Josh is a solid champion. He's beat two world champions. And I'm going to go into the Lions then. And what a way to win it. Do you think he knows what's coming? Do you think that he's no, ready he's for that? Experienced it. He's not experienced it, and you can only to, you can only speak truthfully of how you're going to deal with it until you've been in that situation. When you've been in that situation, then you can turn around and say, "Yeah, I can deal with it because you've shown it, you've proved it." And up until then, it's all words. Little factors play a part when I'm landing shots, the crowd roars. Little things when you're walking in, you know, just having to. Focus on keeping a game face, keeping a poker face. I mean, you, some might have their horse blinkers on, but it's hard to keep. Uh, it's hard not to take the noise in. What are the key things actually in the fight? Because he, I mean, his last two fights, particularly against Carl Frampton, he started like a train. He started, you know, fast with Carl Frampton because he knew, you know, Carl Frampton was going to gas. You know, and we've always known he can, you know, later on the rounds he gasses. You know, I don't think. If he does do that with me, it's good, you know, because I'm, I'm 12 rounds fit. But I think he'll be trying to take his time with me. What would you say to that? I'm adaptable, John. How people um, portray me as a, as a come forward fighter, just throwing lots of punches and high, high pressure, but they don't look at other attributes I bring. And only of late, people have started to talk about me, my punch power, but I know I've had that there for a long time and uh, I feel like I'm only getting stronger and I've always found a way to win and June 15th will be no different. Do you expect him to be trying to slow you down? If you go by a, a, a typical Sheffield Ingle fighter, you know, would try to, to spoil, would try to smother me, take away my game plan. I've got a strong mentality. I know I can stick to a game plan solidly. He's already said many times in this game not to get it. So it kind of makes you think that he wouldn't want to get, want to get involved too much. If he does, I think it'd be a big disadvantage. And if he if he doesn't, then you know I can come back foot two. And he's got to come and steal the title off me. I'm the champion. A challenger has to rip the, the, the title away from the, the champion. That's that's the oldest rule in boxing. Everyone knows that. Um, so he's got to come and win it from me. I'm gonna go in there and just see what I've got to do. You know, I don't. We don't really have a game plan. I don't. I'm not gonna go in there and think, oh, you know, I've got to do this with him or do that. You know, because he's going to obviously have his game plan. I'm just going there, see what he's, see what he's got. And wh whichever works for me, which is the, ever, the easiest way to win, then that's what I'm going to do. Are you ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and really go for it if you have to? If I have to, then, yeah, of course, you know, because that's what you've got to do. You and, know, can whichever... you, and can you look into his eyes and say that you can live with him and that you're going to do 100%, that? 100%, 100%, you know. If he wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and I've got to go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to beat him, then that's what I'm going to do. I'll tell you now, on the, on the night, regardless if I come forward or go on the back foot, I'm new for winning. That's all. Nothing's stopping me. I will not stop until I've won and I'll do whatever it takes. But I just know when I get in that ring, 
his confidence is going to change. Words are easily said. And like I say, it comes down to these at the end of the day. When we get in the ring, you know, the talking stops. When you look across and see him, yeah. what, do you, what do you see? I see, um, I see a facade being put on, obviously. There is an air of confidence there because it's Saturday now. But I see many things what I've said on social media being contradicted. I've seen interviews what certain things have been said and then gone against themselves. So I see a little bit of confusion there. I see a little bit of false confidence. I know he's coming for the, for the fight because it's a massive opportunity, but I think that's a thin, it's on, it's on, it's thin ice. It's thin ice. I think that confidence goes, I'll tell you now on the, on the night, regardless if I come forward or go on the back foot, I'm new for winning, that's all, nothing's stopping me. I will not stop until I've won and I'll do whatever it takes. What do you see when you look into his eyes? He's confident, he's gonna come out and try and have a fight. But I just know when I get in that ring, his confidence is gonna change. In the past we've both boxed similar opponents and like some of the kids have stopped, you haven't. And that's it, you know, and your last two fights, you'd beat, I believe if I boxed them last two kids you boxed, I would've beat them. I probably would have beat him in a better fashion than you. I don't know, I mean, Carl had a right fight. It was good to watch. It was, I was there, it was a good watch. There was no, no need to try, no I need to, no need to try getting ring though after. I've got one, I was mandatory. Yeah, I was I mandatory, know, I've got mandatory, one. You're mandatory, you don't need to get in a ring. You need to get in there, you, you know. know you it would have been, it could have made a bigger fight, couldn't it? Wouldn't, it wouldn't have done, it really wouldn't have done. You're there, the, a, a classy, a classy challenger would have taken part, stepped by and said, right, I'll be the back. next man. No, you were trying to get in. I enjoyed the, 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 the night was Christmas, it was Christmas, it would just been a big fight. We're getting pictures with family, quite emotional, and you were just trying to spot by. There was no need for the time then. There was no need for that. Would you have beaten the Carl Frampton who he faced on that night, do you believe? 100%. Why, did, why are you so confident? Um, Carl Frampton was good, you know, a few years back, but he hasn't really looked the same, you know, since his last three fights. He's just not. I don't know, something just, something just was missing with him. Even for that fight when people were saying, oh, Josh is going to get battered, he's going to get stopped inside six and this and that, I just turned around and said, is Josh going to beat him? And people thought, you know, I was crazy. Like, oh, he's got no chance, he, he can't keep him off. And, you know, he went in there and did what he did. What about when he fought Lee? That night, you know, I fought Lee Selby. was probably about 70, 70%. It doesn't matter, you know, at the end of the day, if, if it was 70%, 100%, you know, he should have, you know, not be in the ring if he felt like he was 70%. But it don't matter. He went there and he beat him. I believe that night, if, if I did box Lee, so I would have beat him. Every fighter has a weakness. What do you see as Josh's principal weakness? I'm emotional. He's emotional. <laughs> That's it. Really? Yeah, honestly. Do you think he's that, tense. Wh why do you think that counts against him? When he gets in that ring, the crowd's going to be behind him. He's going to be like, oh, you know, trying to get in there. But... The thing is, if he tries doing that with me, he's going to be getting, he's going to open up in here. I'll just, I'll just squash that one right now. I'll squash that one right now. I'll tell you straight, the last time I was tense was Dennis Ceylon. That was me. Fight before the Box Lee, I was tense then because that was the one before the world title. For Selby and Frampton was the most relaxed I've ever been. Stood at the tunnel. I mean, Selby. 20,000 there. My, old, my, my, my career would on that fight. If I'd lost that fight, I'd have been Josh the <laughs> talking, hype bubble, boom, ticket seller, gone, like that. Gonna get exposed, written off by everybody. Me fighting Ellen Road. I could have never been able to go down Ellen Road again if I'd got chinned. Lucas Raddy would be behind me. Expectation of a city. But yet, the most relaxed I've ever been. You could put a heart rate on him. I was there, I've got pictures of him laughing. Smiling, enjoying the occasion. Stood there, enjoying it. All these fights I'm part of now, John, is my dream with British title, then European, then world. I've achieved them. I'm enjoying every single occasion. But I also feel like I'm getting to a, I'll get to a certain number and I don't know what happens after that. But I've just dreamt it many, many times. Like I've said, I'm not a clairvoyant. But I've just seen this many times. I've seen I beat Lee. I've seen it. I've seen it many, many times beforehand. I dreamt it many times. 
I'd wake up and I'd have had that same dream again. I'd roll over to Alice, I've had that same dream again. And I've seen it with Carl. I'm, I had it the night before Carl. And it's funny because Barry was actually in it. I beat Carl and I would fight him next. And at first, the fight that felt like it was never going to happen. But I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was happening. It's here now. And I will go on to win the next fight after that. And then I don't know what happens after that. But, and this is just meant to be for me. You know, the male career, like, obviously, it's been building up for 16 years, but all these little pass and loops and everything else, to just wave into each other. Like, 21 years, John, I've been at the boxing game, and it's all rolling out in front of us. Is he looking past you? No, but you see what he said then. He says, uh, he's seen him, he's seen that after he beat Frampton, he was gonna fight me, he didn't, because he was, gonna, he was ready to go to Vegas. I knew I was going to fight him. I knew from a very, very long time ago. You know, since we were kids, I always had the feeling, I thought, you know what, I'm always going to, you know, we're going to cross paths again. In the back of my mind, I always knew, you know, but at this scale, you know, I didn't think it'd be at this scale, but I always knew I was going to fight him again. What do you see as his weakness as a fighter? There's a false confidence there. And I think um, on the night, it just won't we'll be ready for what I bring. He thinks he will be ready and he'll be training hard. You know, obviously he lives life, he works hard in the gym. You know, he's lived, you know, he's in there every day. There's no family, girlfriend, the rope. Loves the bags, loves the gym, loves the running. But the ring. on the night, I just feel like when I hit him, he's gonna have a shock, a massive shock. Have you underestimated his power? No, you know. Because he ain't uh, further fisted. <clears throat> I've never said that it was feather fisted, but you know, um, I've said in the past, you know, I said he is, he hits a lot harder than his record suggests. And um, listen, in this game, you've got to just hit hard enough to keep someone off, aren't you? And obviously, he must do, he must hit hard enough because you can't get to this level being feather fisted. Do you think that technically you're the better guy? He's very well rounded, you know, he, he can box a bit, he can fight a bit. He, he can do everything very well. I just believe I can just do everything a little tiny bit better than him. Do you uh, regret some of the social media spats, if you like, that you have in the run-up to this? His dad and him said, you know, I should be banned for life and this and that, but it, that's their opinion, and it's, you know, they're entitled to whatever they, they want to think. You know, nothing's personal, you know. Everything's just it's boxing, in it? Do you regret, sir? Uh... Sometimes snarling and biting I, I regret, on social I media. I don't regret anything I say. I don't regret anything I say because um, I won't say it otherwise. I won't, I won't say a thing and like words kind of get twisted on social media saying that first hand. But um, I won't say it if I, if I didn't mean it. I will say initially in this build up, I was disappointed how Barry went away with it. He could have made this fight a lot better for himself in just the build up by, you know, after I said my piece, I only got asked the question. What do you think on his drug scandal? I said my piece. But he just went on to talk about, you know, the fights I'd won and this and other, and then like slag off myself, slag off other fighters, and it's like then we're sitting down here and then he's giving me no but respect and it's like what is it? not what, sticking so by what, the words. So what did I say then? All right, your friends you you've, 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 you've you don't even upset me. You just you know, it's just out there, isn't it? It's it's nothing upsets me. me. Well, no, but like in all the build up throughout yeah. You know, when you talk about he's not done this, he's not done that, he's only boxes, I'm going to stop him in three, I'm going to stop him in five, I'm going to stop him in seven, I'm going to stop him in nine. His dad's going to throw a towel, all this, and then you sit looking at me and you give me no but respect and credit and stuff like that. It's like, what's, who is the true Barry? Is yeah, it, what is, know, what is no a persona? I fight, I'm always going to give respect. For anyone to get in the ring, and fight me. I'm always yeah, but gonna it don't come, it don't come across as respectful, really, does it? It don't come across as respectful. What, what doesn't come across as respectful? It doesn't come across respectful when you, when you, I'm not saying you have to come round the table and give me a cuddle and that, saying, yeah. oh yeah, good luck, Josh, and blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying that whatsoever, but the way that you, you downplay a fighter, down talk a fighter, and just like little, little stunts, like for instance, trying to get in the ring at Christmas to, at the, after the Frampton fight, you didn't need to do all that. You didn't, there's ways and means about going fight. The little snipes on, on social media, odd comments, cocaine, wanna be a football, the and stuff like that. It's all. <laughs> 
Don't it? You, you said a lot of things to me. I never took I only, it I only, no, 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 I no, 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 no. Listen, listen. I only, I, I, I didn't, I didn't make. You've I didn't make. Very, you've known I, exactly. Me. I didn't you've make nothing. Not. I got asked a question about you, Jugs. Kind of that's that. You know what else have I said about you? The way you said. I called, I called you Barry from Sheffield, but I knew you was Barry. Chef, I knew you was Barry. Yeah, but you were trying to be a bit clever with it. And listen. In what sense? You know, you know. In what sense? I don't. I don't. Tell me. And tell me. No, you don't need to take it personal. I'm not boxing. taking it personal. No, we're gonna get in the ring. We're gonna sort out you. That, well, that's that's and the main that's thing, it. and that's what I always look past. So I don't take it personal because words are easily said, and like I say, it comes down to the easy end of the day. Yeah, when we get in the ring, you know, the talking stops. What was he, he was doing? Like, that annoyed oh, you? Yeah, you know, Barry from Sheffield. The way he was saying it, it wasn't. It wasn't. He, and he knows. He knows. Seriously, I'm saying not, it. He was. He, the way he was trying to say it, you know, trying to like, you know, kind of like trying to put me down. The way he was saying it, and he knows, you know. But I never took it personal. I just. It is what it is, isn't it? I just threw a little few things back at him and that was it. You know, nothing personal with him. I've known him for a very, very long time. You know, and of course I've got respect for him. I've got respect for anyone who gets in the ring and fights. It don't matter who it is. This belt's come back to Sheffield. And what's going to happen with you is Frank's going to ask for a rematch and then for somehow the rematch is not going to work out and you're going to go on to fight for the WBO and you're going to go on to beat Oscar Valdez. And then hopefully down the line we will get a unification me and you because I'll be the number one featherweight and you'll be the number two. Are you going to turn my lottery numbers as well? <laughs> <laughs> is, is the voices in the room? You hear them? Is the spirits in the room with us? I just, you know, you just know <laughs> something's get, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, he's had his say. Tell him what's going to happen. I don't, listen, I can't follow up from that. That was an Oscar winning performance. I think he's gone past my uh, thing now of, 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 you know, talking. <laughs> Beforehand, because I've, I've backed up many times, and uh, I can look in Barry's eyes and say, Barry, you know, this is not your time. It's not your time. Boxing is massively about timing. I come through, and I got my shot at the time when I was meant to be champion and stay champion and go on and unify the division. This isn't your time. You may come up and get another world title fight again, but it won't be against. You won't win no title against me, mate. I'm telling you that now. Josh Warrington will still be champion on June 15th. On the Sunday morning, I'll be still going on with that belt, still champion, and I'll be looking to go on and unify in this year or next. No, it's not going to happen, 100%. See, it just comes to words now, because I, I, I just said feel, it, you know. I just, I just from know. The app, from the app, I just app. know. I think that probably covers most bases. I think that's uh, that's very good, and thank you, thank you for that, guys. No worries. And thank you for not tearing each other to pieces. No worries. Listen, we're two weeks out. We're two weeks out, you know, there's, it gets to a stage where you can slag each other off on socials, you can do whatever you want, but, you know, we, we, go, we go in two weeks. I can wait two weeks. I can wait two weeks. It's true. We're low on fuel, we're tired, we're hungry, and there's not much energy in us. Well, there's plenty of energy on the 15th, oh, those who are there. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be a good ticket to buy, isn't it? 100%, it's gonna be fight of the year. Let's hope so. Another fight of the year, eh? Racking them up now, John. <laughs> <laughs>